was about being really careful and really delicate because it doesn't take much to go all the way and all of a sudden now that pinstripe is gone. I had no idea that there was a red pinstripe anywhere. You, that couldn't be seen. This afternoon we're uh, working on uh, 1911 white, using solvents in this case to remove overpaint. We did the examination initially when it came in and realized soon that parts of this car has been overpainted or repainted. Typically that means, well, we've lost all original information, but in this case, we actually took a, a small sample of paint and embedded it in polyester resin and then did microscopy. And we saw that there are at least four or five layers that remain on this car. I believe all the original paint is still here. I had no idea that there was a red pinstripe anywhere. You, that couldn't be seen. There's things I just wouldn't expect. Okay, I can buy that there's a red pinstripe on the edges of these battens here. That would be typical. But here we go, on this board here, it's all dark green like the body. There's a square of black paint, but in the middle of it, unrelated to anything else in the form, there's a red pinstripe. I had no idea that was there. So the whole process is a matter of taking your time and going very slowly. But once you know it's once you know the pinstripe's there, then you can start looking, you know, looking a little more closely, put raking light, shine the light on an oblique on an angle. You can start to pick it up. There's actually a, a red stripe in here that I didn't know existed. I don't know if there's a red stripe running through this through here. So as I'm cleaning, I'm constantly looking for that. We worked on the carriage that Abraham Lincoln was taken to Ford's Theater the night he was assassinated. We were told in a short story, which we thought was fiction, that this carriage is supposed to be green and that his monogram was in gold on the door. We got permission from the curator to do some tests. We found the dark green under the black paint. Further cleaning, we found his monogram in gold on the door. So his monogram still existed on that carriage and that's at the Studebaker Museum. Um, we'd be working with just solvents. You know, there's acetone and there's some mineral spirits. And then we also have an aqueous solution that I mixed up and adjusted the pH. All the black has been painted over and the green has also been painted over. The black is soluble in, in an entirely different solvent than the green. So what I used on the black won't touch the green and what I used on the green would completely strip the black. We don't want to go too far. We don't want to go through the paint to the underlying primer or even an earlier paint layer. I'm trying to get through one layer of paint at a time. My initial tests are done up in an area that can't be seen. This is just an aqueous water solution where I've adjusted the pH to about nine. Let's find a spot here. Now if you can see the red coming up. This black is coming up very, very easily. All the black overpaint, as we refer to it, is soluble in something with a higher pH. So we can clean it that way. But if I kept working that area with the same solution, we would lose the pinstripe. So it's about being really careful and really delicate because it doesn't take much to go all the way and all of a sudden now that pinstripe is gone. How do I stop that from going further than I want? So I'll dip one end into uh, acetone and I'll dip the second end into mineral spirits. So if I'm starting to clean, it's starting to break through, but I don't want to go too far so I can literally stop the solvent action with the mineral spirits. So I can just arrest it at that point. This method is how we were trained to clean a painting. We can't really scale it up. The damage can be done with this swab and we could done that much easier if we sort of scaled up our cleaning method. It's very tedious. I think for us to remove the overpaint and recover what's left of the original for this side of the vehicle would probably take me a week just to do the bed and probably another couple of days to do sort of up in the cab area. So overall, I think the whole vehicle would take me maybe three to four weeks to uncover that. And then once it's clean, there'd be a, a, a protective clear coat over top. And you know, we would adjust the sheen to match the condition of the vehicle. You know, We wouldn't put up a high gloss varnish on a vehicle that has a degree of weathering and oxidation. So it's, again, it's trying to make sure that the, con the areas that are conserved fit in with the areas that still remain original. This car is in a National Park Service site collection. When it came here, our primary focus of this project was to stabilize any corrosion, mothball the engine, um, get old fluids out, just prepare it for long-term exhibit. But they had no idea that this car was remained in original condition. So what we're trying to do is we want to at least present one surface for them to know that the original paint remains. They know we're doing it, that we have permission to do it but it's not something that's part of the, the original project. 
So often I fear that if something like this goes back 20 years from now, there may be funding or a new focus upon having a restoration done. And if they don't know what remains, this information get lost, may be lost. So my, my goal is to present an area that says, this is what is under this paint. This is what can be achieved. So before anything else is done in the future, consider my notes, look at my reports, look at the photo documentation, and then make your decisions what's going to be done to it. Basically, this is like an archeological dig. You know, you're not gonna excavate the whole site. Um, when they come in, they're doing a kind of a survey. We're opening up areas to see what's there, but we're gonna leave the rest alone. And hopefully they aren't gonna come in with the bulldozers and take the rest of the site out since they know that there's really something underneath.